Thank you for joining us today at Calvary Episcopal Church in Tarboro, North Carolina. This will be a right to worship service beginning on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. But if you don't have a Book of Common Prayer, please just sit back and be blessed by the service. Also, if you'd like to know more about Calvary Episcopal Church in Tarboro, North Carolina, you can visit us on our, on our Facebook page or on our website or give us a call. We'd love to talk to you. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open and all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Won't you please be seated for the readings of the day. The first reading is a reading from Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of earth as nothing. Scarcely, scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. When he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom, then, will you compare me? Or who is my equal? Says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with the wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 147, verses 1 through 12, 21. Hallelujah! How good is it to sing praises to our God! How pleasant is it to honor him with praise! The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the harp. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares the rain for earth. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve mankind. He provides the food for the flocks and herds and for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the might of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. But the Lord has pleasures in those who fear him, in those who await his gracious favor. Hallelujah. The second reading is a reading from Corinthians. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but if not of my own will, I am trusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself to a slave to all, so that I may win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win the Jews. 
To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but I am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I may win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might be all means to save the sum. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue and they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John, now Simon's mother in law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. And he came and he took her by the hand and lifted her up. And then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick and possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured them. He cured the sick with various diseases. He cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him, and when they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. And he answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went about Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
in our scripture reading today, it says that Jesus rose and went out to a lonely place, some readings like ours, and said a deserted place. And there he prayed. He had a really wild day, didn't he? I mean, when you think about it, he'd been teaching in the synagogue, and then he heals the guy in the synagogue, and he goes, he's probably going thinking he's going to have a nice, quiet evening to have dinner, and then he goes into Simon's home, and the, his mother-in-law is sick, so he heals his mother-in-law, and then everybody in town hears about it, so everybody starts crowding to the door, and he spends the rest of the night healing, healing. Can you imagine the expenditure of energy that that took, and the expenditure of love? So behind the public ministry, which was really crazy every single day, was the private solitude that he sought, a place of prayer so that he could recenter and recoup his energy. Catch that? It was not time out to Jesus, because to Jesus it was time in to himself for the recreation of life, for the realignment with the, with the desires and will of God, and for the replenishment of his power with God. Here was the hidden spring of his authority and power. And we're told that it struck people with astonishment that he would do this. Where have you been? We've been hunting all over for you. They had no idea what he was out there doing in the middle of the night. It was not a cultural or religious thing of the day, even in history. We don't realize that Jesus going off by himself to pray was something new, was something very creative and new. The writers and translators of Mark called it a lonely place, a deserted place. But for him, this lonely place was not a passive time. He wasn't sitting back and sleeping or snoozing. No, for Jesus, it was an active place, as in when he's healing, it's the same I think the same energy is when he was like healing people and healing all the throngs. So when he goes off by himself, this is active. It was a place of high activity for him. You know, Martin Luther wrote a lot about his life and how he liked to do things. And one of the things that he wrote is that he had discovered that when he would do his meditations, that he would have a tendency, if he knew that he had a really incredible busy day ahead of him, he had this tendency to want to kind of like cut short his meditation and prayer time in the morning so he could get on with his day. And he discovered over time that that was the exact opposite of what he wanted to do. What he wanted to do was to spend more time centering himself and aligning himself with God and getting into the power and will of God before he went off to his crazy day. I want you to picture a tree. And so you've got this spectacular summer day and nothing is moving, there's no breeze, and it's just this exquisite day where everything seems to come to a stop. And you look at that tree, and you think it has entered into that stop, too. But it's actually the most creative time in the highest degree for a tree. It's opening itself to the unseen forces of the environment, of to the air, and to the wind, and to the sun, and, and to rain, and to the nutrients in the soil. It's taking that all in. The tree must do all that internal work, literally, in order to have life. It must do it. This is what Jesus did for himself and modeled for us that we should do, literally, literally, in order to have life and to have it abundantly. That's what he's trying to tell us that prayer time is for him. We cannot fully live out our destiny, which God uniquely created for each of us, without intentionally connecting with God in our own lonely, deserted places. It's like really important. A woman once came to me, and I, and I have this image of what she created for me, because she said, D, you know, you said Jesus said to go into your closets and close your doors and be alone and to pray. And she says, but the reality is, D, I live in an apartment that has no closets and has no doors. I think that pretty well describes our lives. We don't have closets or doors anymore. Nothing can keep away from us. We have Facebook, we have Internet, we have TV, we have Twitter. Constant invaders into our deserted places. Just that invasion. 
and, and, we, and it makes us lose our lonely places. And we have to intentionally make them. Honestly, nothing that enriches and empowers us ever just happens. Nothing just happens. It has to be made. Jesus never happened to find himself alone. But boy, he sure worked at it. He went off to the lonely places and they would go searching for him. Do you remember after he healed the 5,000, he puts the disciples in the boat. What does he do? He walks up the mountain and just sits down and gets back together again with God and recentering in his power. And then, of course, the very famous time when they go to the graveyard, when they go there, and he asks them to sit and pray. And what does he do? He separates himself off so that he can pray to God at that moment. Then, you know, after they find him in our story today, it says, let us go on to, he says, it's time to move on to the next town. So he's got his energy back. He's got his mojo back. The metaphor of journey, I don't know if you've noticed this in life, but the metaphor of journey is often used to communicate a quest for life's meaning, a quest to move on and for growth. And if you think about it, Capernaum for him, which is where they were, is his place of comfort, is his home, home-cooked meals, a bed. It was where he was at his most relaxed. It was a place that would whisper to him, stay, stay where you're at. This is nice. And God would say, keep going, keep growing, keep modeling, keep modeling for all these people how it is to live and be as Christ. There is a very real sense in which if we have the mind of Christ and have caught any of the spirit of Christ, we must keep on a path of growth. We are invited to go on to the next stage in our religious experiences. We're invited to keep our minds open and in motion of growth. We're invited to push to the next task, the new unattempted calls that we get on our lives because we're invited to grow and to learn always. When he says, let us go on, he's calling himself and us. Keep going, keep growing. And we find mm, the power and energy to go on that path of wisdom, the secret that Jesus was trying to give us then. We find that energy first by intentionally finding our own deserted place. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please stand as you are able and affirm your faith with the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God gotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all our hearts and minds, let us pray to the Lord, believing God hears our prayers and sees our tears.
God of eternal love, this COVID-19 pandemic opened a Pandora's box of deadly virus, causing untold suffering to the world, causing diseases and death to millions of people, and wreaking havoc to the economy. Look with compassion upon your people, and all people are your people. Heal the sick, especially Sissy, Clancy, Alice, Kim, Jenny, Sharon, Ellen, Tom, Nettie, Rhonda, and Robert. Save the dying, give eternal rest to the dead, and comfort the bereaved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all creation, you meant us to be a single people, ruled by love, justice, freedom, and peace. Break down the walls of our disunity that we may build bridges of understanding, harmony, and solidarity. Weave us together even in our racial, cultural, ethnic, and language diversity. Knit us to be one body and one spirit. Help us to realize that in these times of pandemic, we are all in this together and mutually in the need of each other's encouragement and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the doctors, nurses, and all medical and healthcare workers who are in the front lines of the battle against COVID-19. Cover them with divine protection and give them the double portion of your strength as they care for the sick, thereby expose themselves to the virus and risking their health and the health of their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the researchers, the immunologists, the pharmaceutical scientists, that they may soon discover the effective and risk-free medicines and vaccines. Give them wisdom and humility to seek divine guidance and tap into divine intelligence from the one who created the world and everything in it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the elderly, those with pre-existing health issues, and children who are most vulnerable to viral infections. Enable them to take extra precaution in physical distancing, hygienic behavior, and strengthen their immunity to the virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for people of color who are most impacted in terms of infection and death, for the African Americans who are on the front lines as workers of essential services, for Latino Americans who have the most number of blue collar workers, for the indigenous Americans who are on the reservations with inadequate medical help, and for the Asian Americans who suffer unjust treatment due to the misnaming of COVID-19 as Chinese virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of our government, especially Joe, our president, and Roy, our governor, that they may set aside political partnerships and work in harmony for the common good. Help them to listen to the cries from the grassroots that their hearts may burn with compassion on the plight of people. Enable them to make wise and just decisions, choosing public health over private profit, life over death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the religious leaders, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, Presiding Bishop of the Episcopal Church, Sam, Bishop of North Carolina, Anne, Suffragan Bishop of North Carolina, and D, Rector of Calvary and St. Luke's, that we all may be one even as you and Christ are one. In these times of pandemic, we are all God's children and siblings in Christ who suffered and died for all on the cross at Calvary. Help us to care for one another and to share God's love in the life we lead, in the relationships we create, in the words we speak, 
and in the works we do. Let us remember those who celebrate their birthdays and wedding anniversaries in the coming week. Terry, Brent, Jack, Dee, and Key. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who follow social distancing, wearing masks, frequent hand washing, and all other safety precautions to avoid spreading the virus and halt infections. Help us to embrace suffering as discipline, knowing that suffering procedures produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the whole creation, that in our common groaning we may see a birth of a new world, a world where love and justice meet, and where freedom and righteousness kiss each other. We pray that the reign of God will be on our lips and in our hearts, spreading not the deadly virus of hate and selfishness, but a life-giving virus of love, mercy, and compassion. Unleash not your judgment, O Lord, but your forgiveness, that we may incline in our hearts to keep your law and love one another as Jesus loved us. May this pandemic unite us to be the kind of people that you want us to be. All these we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, who holds all things together and who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Keep us, Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick and lift up all who are brought low that we may find comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. Amen. Now won't you please kneel if you are able and let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins, our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Now I have some announcements to make this today. This is Sunday, February 7th, 2021. I want you to remember that we have communion at Calvary between 11 and 12 today, so please come by. We'll try to be out in the churchyard. If the weather's really inclement, we might be inside the doors. I also want to remind you about Shrove Tuesday. And you know we're going to be doing that this year is to-go boxes. And so you are invited to make reservations. We're closing the reservations as of Sunday, February 14th, just so we know how many to make. And we're also asking you to look around your neighborhood and see if there happens to be a family um, or a couple who would enjoy having the dinner. And so when you make your reservations, include them in your numbers. And we're going to be serving and sending out between 5 and 6.30 on Tuesday for Shrove Tuesday. Um, we're participating again this year with the mite boxes, and I'm very excited about it. And you can pick up the list. It's a COVID kind of fun uh, mite box event. And you can pick up your list at the church office. Uh, we'll also have them in the pancake supper dinners to go. And then you can look for an email. There's going to be an email coming out to everybody in the church. The proceeds this year are going to go to St. Luke's. So please enjoy and participate in that. The current tentative um, schedule for Lent and Easter is going to be available again in the to-go boxes on Shrove Tuesday. We'll be handing them out at communion on Sundays. And they'll be at the church office if you want to keep a schedule of what's going on. But like I said, it's tentative. We've planned all this. We don't know what COVID's going to do. We don't know if we get to open back up. We don't know what's going to happen. So please just know that 
Uh, we'll, we'll stick to it as much as we can, but we're just going to have to stay loose on that. Reverend Howard called, and he wanted me to make sure I thanked everybody who sent cards. It meant so much to him on his 90th birthday to receive cards from Calvary people. So he wanted me to say thank you, and it's been done. The position of vestry clerk is still open. If anybody is interested in that, please call the office and talk to me, talk to Monty Pollard, and let us tell you about it if you want to participate um, with us in the vestry meetings. Thank you for all of those who have taken photos of yourself, of where you are when you're watching our Sunday service, and with a little bit of blurb about what you're doing, and sent it to us to go up on the Facebook page. It's really cool to be able to do that, and it's fun to see how everybody else is, is watching the show and when they're watching it. Um, please call Lawson if you'd like to participate in our recording services by reading the readings of the day. And you can do it either at home or come in and do it in the church, whatever you'd feel most comfortable with. But please call Lawson and sign up to do that. We, we would like to spread some of the joy of the service that we do. If you would like to participate, just know we want you. Now, this year we have our birthdays and anniversaries. So, um, let's see. Last week I forgot to do birthdays and anniversaries. So last week... The birthdays were Anthony, Susan, Reese, and Bobby. And this week coming up, we have George, Michael, and Bernice with birthdays. And if any of you at home are watching and you have a birthday the last week or coming up, please receive this prayer as a blessing to you for your birthday. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And if their hearts may thy peace, which passes all, their un all understanding, abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, anniversaries last week were uh, Connie and Al. And this coming week is Lawson and Tommy and Nancy and Buddy. And if any of you at home have an anniversary, Please, please receive this prayer as a blessing to you. Eternal God, look with favor on these couples. Give them wisdom and devotion in the ordering of their common lives, that each may be to the other a strength in need, a counselor in perplexity, a comfort in sorrow, and a companion in joy. Grant that their wills be so knit together in your will and their spirits in your spirit, that they may grow in love and peace with you and one another all the days of their life. Amen. And now let us ascribe to the Lord the honor due God's name and bring our offerings and come into God's courts with praise.
Please stand if you are able. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is a right and a good and a joyful thing, always and ever, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because of the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and to die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. And he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took the bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and he said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And therefore we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of a new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament, and then we serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at that last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as those who for, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God, take in remembrance that Christ died for us and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Would you please go with me in prayer? My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar, and I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come now spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Our closing prayer can be found on page 365. Won't you please join me? Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Always remember how short life is and how little time we have to gladden the hearts of those who are traveling with us. So be quick to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain in you always. Thank you.